Following the Civil War, the American economy was expanding rapidly. In the closing decades of the 19th century, production rates were climbing and millions more workers were needed. Between 1900 and 1910, nearly nine million people immigrated to this country, looking for work and a better life. But many also found harsh conditions, long hours, low wages. The work was tough and dangerous. As the production rate went up, so did the pressure on workers and the casualties. Railway workers had one of the most dangerous jobs. Nearly 15,000 were killed between 1902 and 1908. Mining accidents were frequent. 4,700 died building the Panama Canal. In a single Pennsylvania county, 526 workers were killed in one year. There were few government rules covering safety and health, and workers had few rights. There was no legal protection for unions. When workers did organize against these harsh conditions, their strikes were usually broken by the company, sometimes with the aid of hired police or government troops. Outraged journalists and social reformers began to support workers' efforts to organize. Photographer Lewis Hine exposed the horrors of child labor. Novelist Upton Sinclair, in his classic work, The Jungle, described the brutal lives of Chicago stockyard workers. He said, I wish to frighten the country by a picture of what its industrial masters are doing to their victims. Exposés like these finally led the government to create the first agencies to protect workers. Woodrow Wilson won labor support by agreeing to improve safety in the workplace. In 1913, the Department of Labor was established. Pressure for change was often finally effective only after a major tragedy. After 361 men died in the Monanga Mine Disaster of 1907, the Bureau of Mines was set up to supervise mine safety. Gradually, industry began to regulate itself in what is known as the Voluntary Safety Movement. The National Safety Council, founded in 1913, set voluntary guidelines for safety engineering and better working practices. Companies put guards around dangerous machinery, set up first aid stations, and began safety classes. But safety education stressed that most accidents were the workers' own fault. This film, made by the National Association of Manufacturers in 1911, was one of many that singled out workers' carelessness as the cause of disaster. But many terrible tragedies were not caused by workers' carelessness. The same year that film was made, a fire burned a triangle shirtwaist factory in New York. Because many of the exits were locked, 146 people, mostly young immigrant women, died. Again, it was only after the tragedy that the first permanent commission to inspect factory safety was set up in New York. During the same time, Industry helped establish a system to compensate workers for accidents. While this workman's compensation system gave employees a measure of financial security for the first time, it took away their right to sue the company for damages. The amount of compensation was limited, and workers were not represented on the boards that decided claims. But this growing concern for workplace safety had some noticeable results, and accident and death rates fell. 